Hey, it's Mike Pyatt, and I'm about to share with you exactly what is on the ARRT radiography exam and what you need to know. That way, you know exactly what to study for and you're not studying the wrong stuff because that usually never helps. Also, I'm going to show you a mental trick how to keep yourself from getting overwhelmed. So real quick, before we dive in, there are 200 to 220 questions on the ARRT radiography examination. The reason the range is because there could be up to 20 pilot questions. Pilot questions mean that the questions are the ARRT is testing for next year's exam. You won't know which are which, so be sure to do them all. You get three and a half hours to take the exam and you need a 75% or better to pass. And you need to pass the exam to be certified and get a job. In some states, they will hire you without being ARRT certified, but that is not very likely. If you want more information after this video, you can go to the www.ARRT.org website for more information about the radiography exam. So there are five main sections in this exam. First, radiographic procedures. And out of the 200 questions, there are 60 questions from this category. This is your positioning, procedures, your central ray, cassette size, your speed, explanation of exams, pathology, and anatomy. Second, image production and evaluation, and there are 50 questions. This is how the x-rays are formed in the machine and on the film or digital cassette. This is all about contrast and density, recorded detail, and making sure your radiograph is high quality. Then third, radiation protection, and there are 40 questions. This is all about the effects of radiation, rules and regulations, and how to protect yourself, patients, and others to receive the lowest dose possible. Fourth, patient care and education, and there are 26 questions. This is explaining the exam procedures to the patient and communication, contrast media, emergency reactions, and how to handle them. And finally, there is equipment operation and quality control, which has 24 questions from this section. This is mainly the x-ray circuit and making sure the equipment works and how to test it for the right performance. So let's go back and look a little closer on what each section is going to test you on and how many questions from each of those sections. So with radiographic procedures, there are seven subcategories. There's extremities, which has 22 questions, spine and pelvis, which has 10 questions, abdomen and GI studies, nine questions, cranium, seven questions, thorax, six questions, urological studies, four questions, and other procedures, two questions. And then for image production and evaluation, there are three subcategories. The first is selection of technical factors, which has 30 questions. Then image processing and quality assurance, 12 questions, and criteria for image evaluation, eight questions. And then for radiation protection, there are four subcategories. The first one is minimizing patient exposure, which has 12 questions, and then second, biological aspects of radiation, 10 questions, personal protection, nine questions, and radiation exposure and monitoring, nine questions also. And then patient care and education has six subcategories. The first one is infection control with eight questions. Second, contrast media, six questions, ethical and legal aspects, five questions, interpersonal communication, three questions, physical assistance and transfer, two questions, and medical emergencies also has two questions. And then back to equipment operation and quality control, which has three subcategories. The first one being principle of radiation physics, which has 10 questions, radiographic equipment, 10 questions, quality control of radiographic equipment and accessories, four questions. So that's the big picture of what you need to know from each section and how many questions are going to be tested from those specific subcategories. And now we're going to go back and dive a little deeper and see what exactly are in each of those categories. So for radiography procedures, in the category of extremities, which has 22 questions, there are toes, which has the AP entire foot, oblique toe, lateral toe, the foot, which has the AP angle towards the heel, medial oblique, lateral oblique, medial lateral, lateral medial, sesamoids tangential, AP weight bearing, lateral weight bearing. There's also the calcaneus, also known as the ascalsis, the lateral view, plantal dorsal axial, and dorsal plantar axial. And then the ankle, which has the AP, AP mortis, medial lateral, oblique 45 internal, lateral medial, and AP stress views. Then you have the tib fib, which has the AP lateral and oblique. Then there's the knee, the AP, 
the lateral, the AP weight bearing, lateral oblique 45, the medial oblique 45, the PA, PA axial intercondylar fossa, also known as the tunnel view. And then there's the patella, the lateral supine flexion 45, the merchant view, the PA, prone flexion 9 degrees, static gas method. Then there's the prone flexion 55 degrees, Houston. And then there's the femur, AP and medial lateral, the fingers, PA entire hand, PA finger only, lateral oblique, AP thumb, oblique thumb, lateral thumb. And then there's the hand, PA lateral and oblique, the wrist, PA oblique 45, lateral, PA for scaphoid, scaphoid stetcher method, and carpal canal. And then there's the forearm, the AP lateral, the elbow, AP lateral, external oblique, internal oblique, AP partial flexion, and axial trauma coil method. Then there's the humerus, the AP non-trauma, lateral non-trauma, AP neutral trauma, scapular wide trauma, transthoracic lateral trauma, and lateral mid and distal trauma. Then there's the shoulder, AP internal and external rotation, info superior axial non-trauma, posterior oblique, the Grashi method, tangential non-trauma, AP neutral trauma, transthoracic lateral trauma, and scapular Y trauma. Then there's the scapula, AP lateral anterior oblique, and lateral posterior oblique. Then there's the clavicle, AP, AP angle 1530 cephalid, PA angle 1530 caudad. And then there's acromion clavicular joints, AP bilateral with and without weights, bone survey, long bone measurement, bone age, and soft tissue foreign body. So those were the extremities. Now we're on to the spine and pelvis. So first cervical spine, AP angle cephalid, AP open mouth, lateral, cross table lateral, anterior oblique, posterior oblique, lateral swimmers, lateral flexion and extension, AP dens, Fuchs method, and PA Judd method. Then there's the thoracic spine, the AP lateral breathing and lateral expiration. The scoliosis series, AP PA scoliosis series, also known as the Ferguson method. The lumbar spine, AP PA lateral, L5 to S1 lateral spot, posterior oblique 45, anterior oblique 45, AP L5 S1, 30 to 35 degrees cephalid, AP right and left bending, and lateral flexion and extension. Then there's the sacrum and coccyx, AP sacrum 15 to 25 degrees cephalid, AP coccyx 10 to 20 caudad, lateral sacrum and coccyx combined, lateral sacrum coccyx separate. Then there's the sacroiliac joints, AP posterior oblique, anterior oblique, and then the pelvis and hip, which is the AP hip only, cross table, lateral hip, unilateral, frog leg, non-trauma, axial lateral, inferior superior, trauma, also known as the clements Nakayama method, the AP pelvis, AP pelvis bilateral frog leg, the AP pelvis axial anterior pelvic bones, the inlet and outlet views, and the anterior oblique pelvis acetabulum, also known as the Jude method. And then there's the abdomen and GI studies, so first we have the abdomen, the AP supine, AP upright, lateral decubitus, dorsal decubitus, and then there's the esophagus, the RAO, lateral, AP, PA, and LAO. Then there's swallowing dysfunction studies. Then there's upper GI series, AP scout, RAO, PA, right lateral, LPO, and AP. And those are all for double and single contrast. And then there's small bowel series, the PA scout, the PA follow through, the ileocecal spots, and the enterocolitis procedures. And then the famous barium enema, the left lateral rectum, the left lateral decubitus, right lateral decubitus, LPO and RPO, PA, RAO and LAO, AP axial butterfly, PA axial butterfly, and PA post evacuation. Then there's a surgical cholangiogram, which just has an AP, and then there's the ERCP, which also has the AP. So that was the abdomen and GI studies. Now we're on to the cranium, which is first the skull, the AP axial town method, the lateral, the PA, also known as the Caldwell, PA no angle, submento vertical, full basal, also known as the SMV, the PA 25 to 30 angle, Haas method, Trauma cross table lateral, trauma AP 15 degrees cephalid, 
trauma AP no angle and trauma AP axial town method. And then there's the facial bones, the lateral, the parochanthial waters, PA caudwell, and PA modified waters. Then there's the mandible, the axial lateral oblique, PA no angle, AP axial town method, PA semi axial 20 to 25 cephalid, PA modified waters, and submental vertical full basal. Then there's the zygomatic arch, submental vertical full basal, parochanthial waters, AP axial town, axial oblique, and lateral. Then there's the temporal mandibular joints, the lateral, the law method, the lateral, the Schuler method, and the AP axial town. Then there's the nasal bones, the parochanthial waters, lateral, and PA caudwell. And then the orbits, the parochanthial waters, lateral, PA caudwell. And then the peronatal sinuses, the lateral, the PA caudwell, the parochanthial waters, the submental vertical full basal, and the open mouth waters. So that was the cranium. And now we're on to the thorax, starting with the chest, the PA upright, lateral upright, AP lordotic, AP supine, lateral decubitus, posterior oblique, and anterior oblique. And then the ribs, the AP and PA above and below the diaphragm, the anterior and posterior oblique. And then there's the sternum, the lateral RAO breathing technique, RAO expiration, LAO, PA sternoclavicular joints, and the anterior oblique sternoclavicular joints. And then the soft tissue neck, the AP upper airway, the lateral upper airway. So that was the thorax. Now we're on to the urological studies, which is the cystography, the AP, LPO, RPO 60 degree, lateral, and AP 10 to 15 caudad. And then you have cystourethrography, AP voiding cystourethrogram, female, RPO 30 degrees, voiding cystogram, male. And then you have the intravenous urography, the AP scout and series, RPO and LPO 30 degrees, PA post void, AP post void upright, nephrotomography, and the AP uretic compressions. And then there's the retrograde pilography, the AP scout, AP pilogram, and AP uretogram. Then finally, other procedures you need to know about the orthography, the myelography, and the venography. So those were the radiography procedures. There is a time limit on YouTube videos, so we need to go to the next video. Click on the link below that says part two to get the second half of this video and get the trick to not get overwhelmed. Go ahead, click that link and I'll talk to you in a second.